Hello, everyone, and welcome to Korean Cinema Today. Here in Seoul, this is Pierce Conran, and I'll be talking to you today about what's going on in the world of Korean film, and we'll have a special guest with us in the studio a little later today. Korean Cinema Today is the podcast of COBIS, which is the online proponent of the Korean Film Council. If you want to check out the latest news, interviews, and features on Korean film, make sure to visit us at koreanfilm.or.kr. There you will also find our webzine, which is also called Korean Cinema Today, and you can also subscribe to our newsletter. And of course, tune in again to this podcast. If you would like to find us on iTunes, just simply search for Korean Cinema Today. Be sure to chat with us on social media. We're very active on Twitter and Facebook. On Twitter, our handle is forward slash Korean Film Biz, that's B-I-Z. And on Facebook, you can find us at facebook.com forward slash kobiz.kofik. That's K-O-B-I-Z, K, sorry, K-O-B-I-Z dot K-O-F-I-C. This is Pierce Conran, your host. I am a journalist for the Korean Film Council, as well as a correspondent for TwitchFilm.com and the founder of a smaller Korean film site known as Modern Korean Cinema. A little later today, we will have the pleasure of welcoming producer Han Sun Hee into the studio. She was a former correspondent for trade journal Variety and these days is a producer of notable Korean documentaries, such as the currently unreleased Manchin, Uh, the Basement Satellites, and last year's architecture documentary, City Hall, from director Jong Dae-un. But first, let's have a quick look at the news going on in Korean film today. Yoon Sang-ho's new film, Soul Station, is not going to be ready on, for screens until early next year, but he has already set his voice cast. Uh, leading, leading that cast is actor Ryu Song-rong, and we also have Lee Jun and Shi Min-kyung, who is currently in theaters with Miss Granny. The film will, is a post-apocalyptic film that will take place in Seoul, following his films The King of Pigs and The Fake. He's on a hot streak, and everyone is excited for this new film, which will be released early 2015. Another new film in the works is One on One, which is the new film by Kim Ki-duk, and starring in the film will be actor Ma Dong-sok, a popular character actor from films such as Nameless Gangster and Neighbors, who has recently made the move to leading man. The film will be completed in 10 days, a 10-day shooting schedule, and will then be submitted to this year's Cannes Film Festival. Another film that may be shooting soon is the new Lee Yoon Ki film. Lee Yoon Ki is a low-key filmmaker who has made films such as My Dear Enemy and This Charming Girl. His last film was 2011's Come Rain, Come Shine. And if this new film were to take place, it would pair him with his My Dear Enemy star Jeon do Yeon and uh, big film star Kim Yoon Suk. They are, are both interested in the film, but pending their current projects, they will... They will um, decide later if they take part in this new production. Later this month will be the Hong Kong International Film Festival. And as years prior, there will be a number of Korean films uh, screening at the event. Among those are two films that uh, screened at the Berlin Film Festival last month, those being Lee song Hil's new film Night Flights and Lee Yong sungs uh, Busan film Ten Minutes, which screened in the new current section there. Bong Joon-ho will also be presenting his 2009 film Mother. Uh, the difference is that it will be a special black and white print that was uh, he prepared with his cinematographer uh, Hong Kyung-po, and um, that was uh, premiered at the Mar del Plata Film Festival last year. So that'll be presented again in Hong Kong. Additionally, two fi- two short films will be presented as part of omnibuses. Uh, Kang Jae-gyu, the big filmmaker who's made the war films. Um, Taeguki, Brotherhood of War, and My Way will present one of the segments of Beautiful 2014. Beautiful is an omnibus from the Hong Kong Film Festival that uh, is repeated every year, so he's been invited to take part this year. Uh, Jong Song will also be taking part in a separate omnibus for uh, actor-turned-directors with uh, a short of his own. As uh, Also, as in previous years, the Korean Film Council will take part in the festival, particularly the Hong Kong Film Mart, which is Asia's largest film markets. They will man a booth there, and uh, there will be a number of distribution companies and VFX companies and more that will be um, operating under that umbrella for the few days. The market takes place from March 24th to March 27th. 
Looking at the box office, Disney's animation Frozen went past the 10 million admissions mark, making it the, only the second foreign film to cross that milestone, but the first time that an animation has ever gone over that uh, figure. The previous record was held by Kung Fu Panda 2, and that was only 5 million. Also, Miss Granny, the most popular Korean film of the year to date, went over 8 million admissions, making it the most popular of this year's Lunar New Year films. Currently, the top film at the box office is the Liam Neeson's uh, new thriller, Nonstop, which had a solid opening weekend with uh, just over 700,000 admissions. And at number two is the Sword and Sandals 3D film, uh, Pompeii, which uh, dropped down to number two, but has already accrued just over a million admissions. Hanging at number three was Miss Granny with just over 275,000 admissions. And CJ's um, thriller, Tabloid Truth, and its second week had just about 230,000 and is now over the 1 million mark. Not a huge uh, figure for the Kim gang starring thriller, but uh, the film has received some decent reviews and may have a little bit more life yet. Uh, that's it for news, and next up is our interview with producer Han Sun Hee. Today we have the great pleasure of uh, welcoming Korean film producer Han Sunny into the studio today. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, we know you must be incredibly busy with the uh, promotion schedule for your new film, Manchin. Um, so, um, Sunny is a, uh, a, was a writer for a long time, uh, having, uh, being a correspondent for trade journal Variety, yep. as well as a writer for the uh, local uh, film magazine, Film 2.0. Uh, also, formerly an editor for Korean Cinema Today, yeah. the, uh, <laughs> the magazine of the Korean Film Council. So, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Uh, now, you are a documentary film producer. Yes. Uh, you have a Dong uh, uh architecture documentary, Talking Architect, under yeah. your belt, as well as the uh, currently on release Manchin from director Park Chang Yong, right. uh, as well as The Basement Satellite, which mm. uh, premiered at um, uh, DMC Docs uh, last year. Right. <laughs> uh, so uh, then uh, let's, let's, let's start at the beginning. You used to do a lot of writing uh, for uh, Variety, as we've mentioned, mm. among others. Um, what, uh, what led you to, to t- make the jump from writing into this uh, documentary production field? Yeah, actually, I, I worked as a journalist for more than more than ten years, um, and then I started uh, study films again at the graduate school. And then at the time, I was very um, tired of writing about mainstream genre films. And then I took a course on documentary films, and then it was like. A shocking experience for, for me because before that I didn't um, I didn't know anything about documentary films but after taking the course I, I got interested in documentary films and philosophy and production itself so and then uh, uh, director Jung Jae-eun just asked me to help her as a producer of her um, uh, documentary, architecture documentary, because I and director Jung Jae-eun had the same um, interest in architecture. So uh, that was the very uh, starting point for me to do a documentary production. Okay. Mm. And um, uh, prior to this, had you had any designs uh, of being involved in production? Oh, uh, yeah, just just vaguely. Okay. I mean, that I, I just wanted to... Uh, have my own film, not just write writing about film. Sure. So yeah, that's why I started this job. Excellent. Yep. So can you tell us a little bit about this job? What what, what are the, uh, the the duties that uh, that are entailed as being a, a mm. documentary producer? Yeah, actually, documentary producer is not different from the narrative film producer. Mm-hmm. So when we uh, get an idea, we uh, find some directors or some crew members, and then. Uh, basically, we have to uh, take care of funding uh, investment. So look, look, we have to look for money, uh, and then uh, during the shooting, we have to organize everything, planning, and then uh, these days I'm more um, uh, taking care of the whole publicity and marketing and distribution. So that's the basic role of documentary producer. Mm-hmm. But as you know, documentary production is very small 
much, much smaller than other uh, mainstream mm, commercial films. So sometimes documentary producers have to do everything. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, they're like assistant directors <laughs> or just uh, production coordinators, so everything. So um, in case of Manjin, 10,000 Spirits, uh, we also we were, we are also very uh, small production. Mm-hmm. So uh, we had a other crew members including assistant director dur- during our shooting mm-hmm. but after the shooting uh, there were no one I mean the director Park chang and there are only two producers including me yeah. so we had to do every everything in post-production like assistant directors wow. and then a lot of I, I d- personally I did a lot of researches on the uh, shamanism of So course, and then yeah. write many many articles uh, I mean the many many stories and then we had to find some money and then even I had to review every archival sources and then help director Park Chang Young to edit the whole materials. That sounds so, like an yeah, epic task. That's Korean style <laughs> in independent pro- <laughs> filmmaking. Sure. Yeah. Particularly on a film like Manchin, which is not your standard documentary. There's mm. really a lot going on there. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about how you how you came in touch with uh, Park Chang Young and uh, began uh, yeah. working on this project? Yeah. Uh, when I uh, how can I say? Actually, I worked for Art House Momo, the the uh, cinematic. I mean, the, the Art House Cinema, and then as a a, a programmer, like, I mean curator. And then uh, th- at that time, Park Chan Kyung uh, just presented his first feature documentary, Anyang Paradise City, which was introduced to the uh, Rotterdam Film Festival's mm-hmm. Bright Future section. And then I organized a small uh, screening event uh, for the uh, cinema, for the theater. So I met him um, at the time, for the first time. And then we talked a bit. And then after uh, one month later, we uh, met again uh, in Jeonju, at the Jeonju Film Festival. Mm. And then we started, you know, uh, talk and drink together. (laughs) 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 That was awesome. Uh, and then at the time he just started to do this uh, film, Manshin, a mm-hmm. uh, uh, documentary film about uh, shaman Kim Gum Hwa. And then yeah, so I got interested in it because I I like basically uh, fantasy films and then the very scary things. And I basically I like uh, horror films. So mm-hmm. that was our common interests. Okay. And then but I didn't have no idea about Korean shamanism. Because I didn't, you know, I didn't know anything about Korean, Korea's traditional mm. religion, even though I'm a Korean. So it was kind of um, uh, ashamed. I was ashamed at the time, but I learned out a lot throughout um, work with him. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so when you were in Jeonju, that was uh, was that the year that you presented Talking Architect? Uh, no, Talking Architect was presented at uh, Busan Film Festival. Oh, okay. I'm thinking yeah, of the, but sorry, the second one. Was before, before the Busan Festival, I met um, Park chang mm-hmm. And then uh, at that time, I was also on... Uh, did, uh, I did the post-production uh, with director Chong jae okay. So it was almost at the same time. Right, mm-hmm. okay. Um, so now, um, Manchin is a very uh, unique piece of work. Yeah. Uh, it's very much uh, kind of a... a mixed media art mm. a lot going on there H- how did it come to take such the the very special form that it has mm. uh, we call it a fantasy docudrama I think it's a Konglish right <laughs> no <laughs> but docu- docudrama is a very common absolutely yeah, yeah common a word um, the film uh, came out from Shaman Kim Guma's autobiography mm-hmm. a silk flower Namze Namze is a kind of her, what is it? Her name when she was very young. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, and then the autobiography uh, it has a lot of great stories um, about her life. Mm-hmm. So director Park Chang Young wanted to uh, to realize her uh, her story, but uh, it but she's very old. So the book is basically about very old Korean you know, society. Mm-hmm. So we had a lot of limitations. So um, Director Park wanted to uh, make some drama mm-hmm. uh, to realize a very, very interesting, very enjoyable episode of her um, her uh, childhood. Yeah. And then, but 
uh, he also wanted to combine that childhood episodes with the real life uh, documentary films. So that that's the basic idea of of uh, this film. And then also, um, uh, Manshin has a lot of fantasy scenes, as you see. Absolutely. Uh, because it's about shamanism, and then shamanism has is has very um, it has many many. Mm, how can I say surreal, surreal uh, things? Mm-hmm. So, to realize that kind of surreal dreams or um, that kind of very um, uh, fantasies, so he wanted to do um, some animation work. So okay. that's that's how you know uh, how we did it. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot going on there. You remind me of the various animation elements in mm-hmm. there, which kind of in a way. Uh, Moved on from his uh, his first um, film work to kind of the the, the mid length film um, uh, Shindoan, which mm-hmm. also had kind of very interesting kind of artistic right. tableaus in there, which kind of blend in with the with the the, the, the visuals taken for mm. for it. Um, so uh, in this kind of a uh, uh, multi format production, did you encounter any significant difficulties? Uh, of course, <laughs> there are so <laughs> many difficult difficulties, but but mm-hmm. it's ba- basically uh, money problem. Okay, sure. Uh, it took. Almost three years to complete this film for wow. us, and then um, we started documentary shooting in uh, June, early June two thousand eleven. Oh, very mm-hmm. long time ago. We started. Mm, uh, we at the time we just met Shaman Kim for the first time, mm-hmm. and then we got some funding, and then was, and then we made a small part of uh, episode drama. So mm-hmm. it costs a lot, a lot of money, but in Korea we cannot find the whole money to complete a documentary film so we had to do segment by segment mm-hmm. I mean episode by episode so when we find some money we do some we make uh, one episode and <laughs> if we <laughs> find another money we made another episode sure. and that's why I did we did it and oh, then a long the, time. yeah and then post-production took almost eight months mm. Mm. Th- th- that doesn't surprise me given the finished product it must yeah. have been quite an involved work yeah so that was the <laughs> most difficult I can thing, yeah, during our production. Yeah. Well, I, I, from 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 my point of view, I'd say it has been worthwhile because it's mm. uh, such a it's a very very impressive piece of work. Um, now, the, the film deals with uh, shamanism, uh, which is quite a common thing in Korean cinema, but rarely mm. has been dealt with in such a uh, such an, an interesting way. Mm. And shamanism is a very hard subject to kind of uh, come to come to terms with. Right. Um, uh, how do you how did you hope that viewers will uh, will respond to this film? Uh, I I just want a more more audience uh, see the film. I mean that. Uh, after we uh, we just re- we just released the film, uh, and then the audience response is great. Uh, and then surprisingly, the younger audience they are interested in shamanism. I mean that I don't know why, but uh, they they are I- enjoying the film. So that that it surprises me, actually. So um, yeah, but uh, as I figured out very special uh, special thing I mean that very special meaning and then special tradition in our Korean society I just want audience also to you know do that yeah that's my hope Good, good, and I'm glad to see, uh, glad to hear that young viewers are interested, and that <laughs> yeah. certainly bodes well for the mm-hmm. film's chances. Um, well, what do you think about foreign viewers? Do you think it'll be the, the shamanism is going to be a difficult topic for them? Yeah, basically, religion is a uh, hard topic, mm, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> yeah, it's shamanism is a religion. Korea yeah. is indigenous religion, so it's a, it's a hard topic, but. Basically, Korean shamanism is related to a very specific ritual. Call, we call it a gut. Mm. Yeah, and then it's a gut is a kind of uh, total art. So we want to uh, call it a, a total art. Mm, I see what you mean. Yeah, and then because it consists of a lot of music, dance, and then even theatrical uh, elements. Mm-hmm. So when and then it could take uh, that ritual takes almost six or eight hours a day. The whole day, yeah, the shamans spend a whole, a whole day to do that. It uh, goes good. on for that long. 
Yeah. Wow. I didn't yeah. And then it, it's long. like a like a stage play. It, mm. it consists of twelve stages, and then even even a very very big big good ritual, very specific uh, ritual. It takes almost five days to do the complete to to do the whole st- stages. My goodness. Yeah. So it's a kind of just it's an art. And then even Shaman Kim Guma wanted to wanted the audience, uh, want the people, want uh, Korean people. Uh, to see the good as a kind of art art form, because cr- in Korea shamanism has been oppressed a lot. Yes, and, yeah, as is certainly documented yeah, within the film. Yeah, and then and then uh, people people didn't um, take a, a, a good as an art form. So that's what uh, Shaman Kim Guma uh, dedicated her life to make people see the good as an art form. Mm. So I think foreign audiences can see that throughout our film. I mean, that you did it? Certainly. Yeah. I was very impressed by the film. Yeah. Um, now, I, I've, I'm fairly well-versed in Korean film to an mm-hmm. extent, so I, I wonder what uh, other foreign viewers are less... Less uh, less privy to Korean cinema, mm-hmm. but you know, I think back to some of the um, some past Korean films mm-hmm. about Delta shamanism in a mm-hmm. very mysterious manner as right, well. Right. There was um, Pak Hong Min's recent film, mm-hmm. um, A Fish, which oh, uh, yeah, right. which was well received at various festivals like Vancouver, yeah, right. or uh, even going further back to Lee Jung Ho's The Man of Free Coffins, mm-hmm. uh, that wonderful scene towards the oh, end. Oh, I like the film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's great. Anyone that, that the West that has seen mm-hmm. it, if you have had the chance, mm-hmm. but those that have seen it have liked it, mm-hmm. regardless of what they've known about Korean films. Yeah. So there's 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 there is kind of a an element that mm-hmm. I think can can be grabbed by any any viewer. Yep. Uh, now moving on from Manchin, there's another another film that you've been working on called The Basement Satellites. <laughs> this screen. Yeah. It's a uh, DMC Docs and Seoul Independent Film Festival last right, year. Right. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about this project? Yeah, it won Audience Award at the DMC Docs Festival. Um, it's a it's a s- small smaller film uh, compared to Amanjin, and it's about a story of a, a very eccentric artist mm-hmm. who wanted to launch his own his personal satellite for the first time in the world. Um, s- but it, m- I'm gonna release the film. I you know, I liked, I'd like to release the film um, in summer this year, and then. But um, the film will have its international premiere soon. Mm-hmm. We are invited to some big festival, <laughs> so we're yeah. Mm, so we're preparing the international premiere of the film. Good stuff. Yep. I'm sure people are looking forward to that. I, I had a chance to see that. Mm. Uh, thank you for inviting me to a screening. Um, and uh, that's, an, that's another another great documentary I enjoyed. Uh, so speaking of documentaries, you have obviously strong ties to the field these days. And there's a lot of documentaries that are coming out and impressing right. people these days, mm. such as uh, recently Nonfiction Diary or A Dream of Iron, which just premiered at Berlin. Um, how healthy do you think the uh, the documentary filmmaking scene is these days in Korea? Oh yeah, I think it's very healthy, very vibrant. I mean, there are a lot of good uh, filmmakers these days. Uh, so, I think it's strange that these days Korea's ma- uh, mainstream co- uh, commercial dramas are not well accepted in international scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, certainly. Don't you think? Uh, yeah. I do agree. Yeah. <laughs> Every so often, one kind of breaks yeah. to an extent, but mm. it's uh, mm. it's a little lower than what it used to be. It yeah, yeah. so. You know, in terms of commercial films, we have to turn our pages in the, uh, you know, from the, the renaissance of Korean films uh, from the early two thousands, mm-hmm. and then I think documentary in documentary filmmaking, I think a new renaissance has started. I mean, mm. there are a lot of great films these days. Mm. So yeah, the pu- the future is very promising. I yeah, think. Yeah, certainly. Mm-hmm. And uh, what what I've um, uh, focusing on these names again, we have uh, mm-hmm. um, Park Chang Kyung and uh, filmmakers like uh, uh, Jung Seok and um, uh, Kelvin um, uh, Park uh, Park Kyung Gun. Yeah, Kyung uh, Park Kyung Gun. Uh, so mm-hmm. they made uh, Nonfiction Diary and uh, Dream of Iron. Both of those were at Berlin. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nonfiction Diary was also in um, Busan, where it won the Messinat Award. Um, so these are these are I mean these are great documentaries, uh, mm-hmm. all three of them. But so what makes them a little different from previous documentaries is that they're not uh, they're they're not just dry historical films. Right. They have a they have a lot of um, they they employ a lot of film techniques. Mm-hmm. Um, they're 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 very vibrant. They're very interesting. Mm-hmm. They have a there's definitely this kind of new wave of Korean documentary. So um, what do you think about this kind of this new style that seems to be developing? Yeah, I think it's very good 
phenomena uh, because in Korea documentary is close re- has has been closely re- related to media activism mm. uh, because you know Korea has a very um, difficult history <laughs> during the 1980s and 1990s so there are still that kind of independent spirit that documentary should be uh, activism mm-hmm. but these days uh, e- um, young documentary filmmakers they have different origins I mean they, they have different roots um, in their documentary production so Jung Yoon Seok and Park Jung Geun and Park Chang Kyung they are all from the visual art field yeah yeah so they are they were trained as a as a visual artist not as a media activist but, but Park, Park Chang Kyung is also an activist I think yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Jung Yoon Seok is also his uh, yeah yeah he certainly is yeah. um, so 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 these these guys the, these new filmmakers they they are very they have very keen sense on uh, visual images absolutely and then and a combination of image and music mm-hmm. and then they also have a um um special interest in very i think very how can i say very minute subject matter i mean mm-hmm. the very small yeah uh, not a not a grand theme but sometimes very private sure. sometimes hidden and then sometimes forgotten uh, subject matters so they are uh, interested in those those kind of things mm. so they discover, uh, they discovered those kind of forgotten subject matters in the mainstream Korean documentary filmmaking, and then they make it, uh, make it new. Yeah. I mean, that, so that's why um, uh, Korean documentary films are very, quite fresh these days. Yeah, they do yeah. feel very fresh, and yeah. uh, people, um, these films, are, as they're kind of rolling out to festivals now, and mm. international audiences are getting to see them, mm. people are very much, you know, kind of, uh, their, 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 their attention, their curiosity is peaked, it's like, what is going on in the Korean documentary scene? Yeah. Um, so, um, beyond Mansion and Basement Satellite, mm. do you have any new, uh, any new projects in the pipeline? Yeah, uh, actually, I'm, I mean, in production, <laughs> in shooting, uh, uh, stage. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a new film. It's titled "The Children in Blue." Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's in English subtitles and uh, in English title. And then the 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 literal Korean title is Ch- "The Children Who Survived." Okay. Mm. <laughs> it's a it's an activist documentary. Yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because uh, it's a story about a very tragic uh, incident in Korea's mid nineteen eighties. It's about a um, uh, it's a it's a it's a story about people who lived in a very big uh very big welfare center mm-hmm. which was located in Busan okay. and then they had to uh experience very severe violence and then the incident was quickly forgotten from everybody's head everybody's heart mm-hmm. and then a guy just came out a, a 2 years ago um to tell his own story to tell his own experience and then yeah. So, and then more and more people who had who lived in that uh, welfare center, mm-hmm. they just came out. They're just coming out. So, yeah, yeah. so we are following them, and then we wanted to uh, criticize a very. Uh, it's it's a it, it is related to Korea's military dictatorship. Mm-hmm. So, and then state violence. So very we wanted to issue. yeah, w- a very sensitive and political issue. So, we want to criticize that kind of um, so, state violence yeah and I think uh, very bold <laughs> it is very bold but I think yeah. now is the time that uh, that uh, mm. audiences are, are, are listening you know mm. there was a uh, there was a fear of kind of recrimination 10 years ago and now we're seeing films yeah. like uh, like national security mm. and even something like uh, the, the attorney as well right um, which which are oh, yeah. dealing with this yeah um, uh, so uh, this sounds. Uh, I, I'd never heard of this this topic. Mm. I'm certainly very very curious to see uh, <laughs> to see this project. Yeah, actually, it, was, uh, it is made by a very uh, quite young documentary filmmaker, and then we just presented this project to uh, international pitching forums mm-hmm. like IDFA uh, in Amsterdam Documentary right. Film Festival, and and the upcoming Asian side of the doc. Uh, that's a that. That's a, they they these are very important documentary pitching event in sure. the world around the world. So, uh, and so we we just wanted to take this project to uh, international scene. So that's what I'm doing. I met a lot of commissioner commissioning editors, financiers mm-hmm. <laughs> around yeah. the world to persuade them the this kind of 
specific uh, Korean history. Mm. But that kind of violence can happen every everywhere in the world. So that's what I'm doing now. Yeah, there's yep. definitely something very universal about it. Yeah, it sounds like a story that that, ne- that needs to be told. And uh, <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll we'll look forward to to seeing that in the big yeah, screen. Thank hopefully, you. hopefully quite soon. Um, so then, uh, finally, could you tell us a little bit about uh, some of your favorites, some, some of your favorite <laughs> Korean films, maybe? Yeah, um, it changes. <laughs> 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 because I was, uh, I saw a lot of films from my college years, mm, so it's, my taste always changes. But when I, uh, when I uh, prepare the answer, uh, prepare answers to your questions, I just... Um, uh, I'm just. I just wanted to recommend you a very uh, old, uh, not not the old, very specific, very special uh, Japanese film. Mm-hmm. It's called uh, Funeral Parade of Roses. Oh yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. I know from very Toshio like that. Matsumoto. Mm-hmm. Because I'm, I really, in, I'm really into the the Japanese films in 1960s, uh, like Oshima. <laughs> mm-hmm. the kind of the, yeah, the new wave yeah, new wave Japanese yeah. films. I really like the films, and that uh, a funeral parade of roses. It it is like also a combination of documentary and drama. Okay. Yeah, it's about that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's ab- about the very uh, social turmoil of Japan Japan mm-hmm. uh, during the uh, in uh, 1969 and 1968. Those years were very, you know, so. Oh, that and then the film is also very beautiful mm-hmm. and very very uh, bold, uh, aest- aesthetically. Yeah. So I want to recommend that film. Definitely. Yeah, I, I like I, it. I have it sitting on my shelf. I haven't oh yeah. Watched it yet. <laughs> 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 now I have to. Mm. <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, um, uh, this is, has been great talking with you. Thank you very much oh, for, so for much. Taking, taking the time to come here and to tell us a little bit about uh, your new film, Manchin, 10,000 mm. Spirits, which is currently on release in Korea and will yep. hopefully be seen very soon in international markets. So thank you again. It's been a pleasure having you in thank the studio you. today. For this week's Korean Film in Focus, I wanted to talk a little bit about the new animation Satellite Girl in Milk Cow, which comes from local uh, indie distributor Indie Story. Uh, the film is the feature-length debut of Jang hyung Yoon, who is a noted uh, short film director who made, among previous films, uh, Coffee Vending Machine and Sword. His uh, short films have been very popular, both here and abroad in the festival circuit. They've won a few prizes and animation festivals around the world. But now he's come back with his first feature-length film. It's taken a while to get here, but the notices have been positive now that he has. Um, of course, animation in Korea has been steadily rising in the last few years. There wasn't much going on in the early 2000s, but uh, over the last few years, we've had films like Leafy, A Hen into the Wild, which scored over 2 million admissions to become the most successful domestic animation here of all time. And then, of course, we have um, Yoon sang Ho, who's made his films, The King of Pigs and The Fake. And, of course, his new one, as I mentioned earlier in this episode, is Soul Station coming next year. His contemporary, Jang hyung Yoon, has made a film that is in some ways reminiscent of Studio Ghibli, but is all, uh, this kind of Japanese animation style, but is also very much its own creation. It's uh, incredibly creative, and uh, as the title suggests, it follows um, a, a satellite that falls from space and turns into a young girl, and um, a young boy who is an aspiring singer-songwriter who, following a heartbreak turns into a milk cow and then he goes on the run from uh, uh, an incinerator which likes to eat the hearts of lonely people of course coming to his aid is none other than Merlin but of course Merlin is uh, in this iteration a roll of toilet paper that may sound quite strange but actually it works with quite charming effects in the film and though it does not have quite the sophistication of uh, the more um, the more expensive films made uh, in Japan, of course it doesn't have that kind of budget. And this is a debut, but uh, I'm expecting uh, that uh, that Zhang will do better in future. But already the, this film is really quite strong, and I recommend it to anybody that is interested to or curious to check out uh, Korean animation, which I do believe is going to have a bright future ahead in the years to come. So that's Satellite Girl and Milk Cow. It went on release a few weeks ago in Korea. Korea, and hopefully we'll be seeing a little more of it on the international stage in the months to come. 
That's it for this week's episode of Korean Cinema Today. We'd like to thank producer Han s o n h e e again for joining us in the studio, and of course, all of you out there for listening. I hope you've enjoyed the show, and please tune in again next time. Here in Seoul, this is Pierce Conran uh, reporting for Korean Cinema Today. Thank you.